very pleased this morning to have Scott Monty, who's actually led globally that whole campaign with Ford to bring social throughout the entire company uh, and bring it in as deep a way as possible, speaking today about content. Please welcome Scott Monty from Ford Motor Company. Scott, welcome. Well, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Hong Kong. Thank you very much for having us here. Uh, we've got a very exciting story to tell at Ford. It's an international story. We do business on six continents all around the world. We're closing in on Antarctica. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, but we do have six manufacturing plants in China. Uh, we've really been aggressive about our expansion here in Asia Pacific, so it's a very, very important market for us. What I'd like to do this morning is to just briefly go through some lessons that we've learned along the way. A number of these are going to be very US-centric uh, uh, campaigns, but the lessons that we hope to draw here are universal. They're universal uh, internationally. They're universal whether you're on the agency side or on the client side. They're universal in that they work for large companies as well as small companies. They're really tied to human nature, and that's what really drives us. So um, that's me. Um, so quickly, the challenge that we're all faced with today is that people simply don't trust us. They don't trust companies. They don't trust governments as much as they used to. Well, who do they trust? They trust third-party experts, academics, analysts, maybe even the media to a certain extent. But more importantly, they trust people like them. People like them. Think about the last major purchase that you've made in your life, whether it's a smartphone, maybe a tablet, dare I say an automobile. Who have you talked with? Your friends, your family members, your neighbors, your coworkers, people that you have a relationship with. But maybe you've also taken it to the next level and you've interacted with somebody online, somebody that you may never have met before in real life. And why would you respect their opinion? Because you've probably gotten to know them over time. You've gotten to know their publication. Maybe you've gotten to know other purchases that they've made in the same forum. But they've built trust with you. Right, so this is where we are right now, is a deficit of trust. At the same time, we live in a 140-character society. People aren't paying attention as much as they used to because they're bombarded with so many messages every day. Some say we get 3,500 brand messages at us every day. Every time you pick up that phone, every time you open your laptop, every time you walk through a crowded uh, street corner or square, you're bombarded with brand messages. How are we as brands to break through this, this jumble of content and get people's attention at the same time that they already don't trust us? So we like to say at Ford, 90% of social media is just showing up. It's knowing the right platforms to be on. Know where your customers are and be there. And it could be any variety of platforms. And I know they're different regionally, um, but they're growing. And we need to stay attuned to this and be where our customers are. But it's more than just showing up. I know the math doesn't work out here. That was intentional. Because there's more effort than just 10% in making it worth their while once you interact with them there. Let me explain give you an example. We have over 80 Facebook pages globally for Ford Motor Company. When you add them all up, that's more than 19 million fans of Ford Motor Company worldwide. And as you can see, they've got very different interests. The Ford Mustang is the single most liked automobile on Facebook. And I guarantee you that if we were sharing information from our corporate feed about electric, electric vehicles or hybrids or fuel efficiency, it's not really the message that our Mustang fans want to hear. Right? They want their V8 engine with a growl, and you know they want to have a lot of fun. And that's great. So we've segregated that content to the people that it matters to. 
So when you look at how we do this on a global basis, there's, again, some very universal things that we talk about. The first thing we have to do is create strong products. We've spent the last five years at Ford all coming together on a, under a single plan where we're manufacturing global vehicles. Every team around the world has aligned on this. So we've got the strong products to actually prove out what we're talking about now. Then we need to create engaging content. Well, what does engaging content mean? You know, when you think about it, and I'll, I'll use Facebook here as an example, of the three things you can do with content on Facebook, like, comment, and share, in that order of importance. The like, it's the least you can expect from a fan. It's a digital grunt. Like this photo. <clears throat> well, if you comment on it, that takes a little more effort. But if you go the, the added length of actually taking that content and sharing it on your own platform, that means it resonated with you in some way. It was engaging. We need to speak like the public. We don't need to speak like a lawyer, God forbid, or like a press release, or like an official business statement. We need to talk like regular people. Right? It's the vernacular that people expect. We need to let them talk back to us. These are two-way platforms, and no longer is a single push of content or of marketing simply going to work. It's about a dialogue. And ultimately, and the reason this is twice as large as the other things, is because listening is so important. I don't know if culturally it's the same here, but in the U.S. we have a saying that a lot of our grandmothers told us. You have two ears and one mouth. Use them in that proportion. And think about the power of that statement with regard to communications and marketing. And if we listened more and spoke less, what kind of insights we could get and what kind of content we could deliver and what kind of products we could create based on what our customers are telling us. Okay, there's power in listening. So why do people share content? There was a recent survey by Ipsos that looked at the top four reasons for people sharing content. One, they just want to share interesting things. They want to share important things, things that matter to them, things that matter to the world. They want to share something funny. I know everybody jokes that the internet is full of cat videos. Well, there's a reason. You know, people like to share lighthearted things to take them away from the drudgery of daily life at times. But interestingly, people also want to let others know who they are and what they truly believe in. Okay, so think about that for a bit. So, to give you an example, and I don't know how many of you have seen this video, it just surfaced in the last week. And those, those Norwegians are pretty crazy. This is a, from a comedy team out of Norway. To give you a sense as to why funny matters, this video, in less than three days, has already amassed 10 million views, and I guarantee you it's going to go into the record books along with Gangnam Style at a certain point. So we, we can just roll this for about a minute and a half. Cow goes moo, the frog goes croak, and the elephant goes toot. Dogs say quack, and fish go blub, and the seal goes ow, ow, ow. But there's one sound that no one knows. What does the fox say? I won't subject you to the whole thing, but <laughs> you get the sense. This kind of mindless, uh, thumping electronic beat 
It's universal. It, it doesn't make sense. I had somebody comment on uh, a, this uh, video that I shared, and they said, why? Why is this going viral? I don't know. <laughs> None of us knows, but when, when this catches fire, and it's simply because it's probably universal, it's cute, it, it actually brings to mind a mystery that no one has solved yet. What does the fox say? <laughs> but it does it in a fun way that transcends language even, and we saw that with Gangnam Style completely in Korean, but it took the U.S. by storm. And you know Americans don't speak other languages very well. <laughs> so funny matters. This is one of my favorite marketing quotes of all time. If you wish to persuade me, you must think my thoughts, feel my feelings, and speak my words. This wasn't said by Dale Carnegie or Seth Godin or any marketing guru that you've ever heard of before. This phrase was actually uttered 2,000 years ago by the Roman orator Cicero. And the reason I bring this up is not because I was a classics major studying Latin in, in uh, college. I was. I never knew you could go on to be head of social media with a Latin degree, but evidently you can. But it's here to remind us that human nature is constant. We still want the same things that we've always wanted. We want to be heard. We want to make a difference in the world. And we want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Right? These are principles that guide us. So, in looking quickly at some of the things that we've done at Ford, we had a car, global car, first launched in Europe, was coming to the States. We gave 100 of these cars to 100 digital influencers for six months and let them document their lives on social media. All they had to do every month was create a single video. Single video, once a month for six months. The rest of the time, they did what they normally do. They tweeted, and they Facebooked, and they YouTubed, and they Flickered. Remember Flickr in the days before Instagram? But they shared their lives in real time, and we put it up on our own site. We were that confident in our vehicle that we let them talk about our vehicle without censoring it, without editing it, without touching it at all. Why? Because who do you trust? Someone like you. We had a hundred someones like you in our vehicle for six months. This is from four years ago, so the metrics are low compared to what we know now, but the bottom line is we brought in over 130,000 people to Ford.com who said, tell me more about this vehicle when it comes to the dealerships. More than eight out of 10 of them had never owned a Ford before in their life. We reached a completely new demographic by using social. And the lesson here is that, look, if you have a good product, don't be afraid. Hand it over to people and let them be your storytellers. Let them take the message for you. Again, because who do people trust? They trust people like them. Next, we have a site called Ford Social. This is kind of our hub of all social activity. You can reach all of our um, main social accounts through here, but it's, it's a blog, but it's more than just a blog. It's a place for people to submit ideas to Ford engineers, where our engineering and product strategy group actually review these and comment on them and share them and like them and have a community discussion about what's useful for automotive product development of the future. We also give people a chance to tell their own stories about Ford. It's not just the corporate message. Nana here is 71 years old, and she went out and bought a 5.0 liter Mustang to race her grandson. We can't make this stuff up. People love sharing stories about themselves and how the product has affected their lives. We have a badge program, which if you're familiar with Foursquare, you'll, you'll see the similarity there, but we don't make people earn badges. We let them select badges. What does that do for us? It gives us a sophisticated CRM system that tells us what kind of content all of these people are actually interested in receiving from us. Right? So if you like the Mustang and you don't like 
electric vehicles, you're not going to get EV material. You're only going to get Mustang material from us. Right? Giving people choices as to when and how and where they get their content. We take some of our most active influencers from this site and we bring them to auto shows. We have them in VIP situations and put them alongside members of the media and treat them uh, in special ways. And the lesson here is that if you're doing social, it's not just about the big campaign. The big campaign is important for actually getting attention, but it's about an ongoing commitment with your audience, whether it's customers, whether it's potential customers, employees, suppliers, you name it. It's about building this relationship over time. It's not about the one night stand. When we launched the Explorer, well, when we revealed the Explorer in uh, 2010, we wanted to do it differently than we had ever done before. We wanted to go off of the traditional auto show cycle and we wanted to own the day. That was our task, was to own the news that day um, with the Explorer. So we went on Facebook and we created a system where people could join together and tell us what they were interested in seeing. And we brought them along for four months, let them know what the secret was, and we culminated in the middle of July in revealing the vehicle. We did it in a very special way, with exclusive video, with live chats, with access to the people behind the project, this was all going on leading up to and on the day of that reveal. It was absolutely engaging content. We had a sophisticated plan that combined paid, earned, and owned media all pointing to a single thing on that day. Right? It wasn't enough to just have our teams working in parallel. The teams were actually on board on the same project, which was very different for us. At the end of the day, we did better than we would have done if we had, if we had uh, taken out a Super Bowl ad. And you know, that's always the, the standard to which we're held. We were the number one trending topic on Twitter that day and the number two trend for Google all day. And the only reason we were number two is because one of the Hollywood starlets was either being admitted to or released from some rehab facility. So entertainment always wins out. But the lesson here is, look, if you actually take the time to integrate paid, earned, and owned, it can actually have a significant impact on what you're trying to accomplish. Paid, earned, and owned together. Then if we move on to uh, this little guy, this is Focus Doug. The Ford Focus, which is now the number one selling nameplate in the world, sold over a million Focuses around the world last year. In the United States, it had become something of a national joke, and we needed to get attention to the fact that the new focus was completely different. So we enlisted the aid of a puppet. Naturally, right? Well, it wasn't just any puppet. This puppet was actually directed by Paul Feig, who is behind Freaks and Geeks and the Big Bang Theory and the Bridesmaids and a couple of other uh, very cultish type comedy hits. And using a comedy director and some improv actors, we actually got Doug and John, his, his Ford guy, to, uh, to go out in the vehicle. But the thing is, we did not put the attention on the vehicle. We put the attention on the two of them. The vehicle was a backdrop. We gave Doug his own Twitter account. And we gave Doug his own Facebook page. And he was interacting with people, two-way dialogue, interacting with people, and the same uh, kind of sassy, uh, very off-brand kind of way. Why? Because we knew we needed to get inside the heads of people we hadn't reached before. I'll give you a quick example as to how Doug actually brings some of our product features to life with this next video. It went really well. Oh, I, I do too. I mean, I think it went well in the sense of, well, that was lame. What are you talking about? People love the car. People, for whatever reason, seem to think we have some chemistry. Well, I think what people thought was, why is that one guy trying to overshadow that other guy? How am I going to overshadow you? You're exactly. orange. That's what I'm saying. Why do you even try? I'm not trying. We're a team here, and I'm trying to... You are trying. Here's what you're trying. You're trying my patience. You know what? I'm done talking to you as a person, and now I'm going to use my finger to uh, text you. I'm going to communicate with you through sync. This is... This is ridiculous. And sent. Please say a command. Listen to text. This is how it's going to be. 
this is how it's going to be. You're just going to sit here mm -hmm. texting me. You know what I'm saying to you? But I'm going to say it out loud. I say, LOL. I am rolling on the floor laughing. I am ROFL. Please say a command. Listen to text. You're a sad little man living in a sadness cave. Uh, sad little man. You know what? Guess where you don't want to go. You don't want to go into the height thing, you orange hobbit. Mm -hmm. Please say a command. Listen to text! Your mom likes hobbits. So, a little different from what you'd expect out of a corporate brand, but we wanted to have fun. We had results. Over four million views of Doug's videos. This was a story arc of John and Doug over the course of about six months. Um, Doug actually had more Facebook fans than the vehicle that was competing with the Focus from one of our competitors. A puppet had more fans than the vehicle. We raised positive opinion on the Ford Focus by 77%, and we saw a 61% increase in consideration of people who would actually go and buy the vehicle. Results, because we focused not on product features, but we focused on the personalities. You know, when you think about why people engage, and again, why people share, they're less likely to share an ad because it looks like an ad, and they're more likely to share because it resonates with them in some way, that it's interesting, or it's important, or it's funny, or any of those other things I mentioned. All right, so understanding that core human nature is so important to us. Uh, one last video before I wrap up. Um, everybody hates car ads. I think that's probably fair to say universally. And we have a, a summer sales spectacular that we always do. Our dealers, you know, roll out the, all of the, the inflatable gorillas on top of their dealerships and the big banners and everything, and it's kind of, it, it's kind of kitschy. We wanted to approach this in a much different way. We wanted to make a big deal out of our summer sales spectacular. We enlisted a couple of up-and-coming Hollywood directors to create 30-second spots for us that looked like Hollywood movie trailers. And the challenge for them as storytellers is they had to create this miniaturized piece of content that told a story in a very small window. And they did it in a way that actually captured a lot more attention than just, we've got cars and trucks on sale. I'll give you an example with how this rolled out with this video here. The giant robot has invaded the city and has taken over. You're gonna need this. All attempts to remove the threat has failed. Now, during the Ford Summer Spectacular, get a blockbuster deal, an F-150 with $1,000 matching down bonus cash. Now playing at a Ford dealer near you. So the reason that this worked is because it was completely unexpected, and it was more of a story and more of what people were used to from non-automotive storytellers. All right? So, one last point. People always ask, can you sell cars in a microblogging format? Well, evidently, you can. Chris Levitt here says, I only bought a Ford because of Twitter. I'm serious. And he goes on to explain, well, I bought the Ford because my interest was piqued via Twitter and a relationship created. And they make a great escape. It has to be about the product first, but... He's, he's really on point about the relationship. And he goes on to say, they built a relationship with me. I trust Ford. Attention and trust, backed by great content, moving customers forward. Thank you very much.